Welcome to Devs on the Graph, a developer-focused interview and workshop series where we can learn about the teams and the tech being built with the graph. In today's episode, I'm really excited to share with you Abay Singh. Abay is working on building Dapplooker, a blockchain analytics platform where users can build no-code custom dashboards from data sourced from subgraphs and substreams. Dapplooker is a powerful reminder that not only do we need the ability to write our data to this ledger, but we need a permissionless and decentralized way to read from this incredible store of data. I don't take this data access for granted, and I'm thankful for builders like Abay that are out there building towards a better, more transparent internet. In today's interview, Abay shares his story of how he got into Web3, why he's building Dapplooker, and also shares how anyone can start building no-code analytics dashboards in a workshop at the end of the interview. If you're listening to the audio version of this interview, be sure to click the link in the description at the end of the interview to watch what Abay is building with Dapplooker. So without further ado, I bring you Abay with Dapplooker. So yeah, with you, uh, let's see, where can we start Abay? Let's start a bay. I want the audience and the listeners out there to first understand who you are, if you could introduce yourself, as well as what you are doing in the Web3 space. Go ahead and take it, a bay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, for this invitation, Marcus. So uh, I'm Abhay, uh, co-founder of uh, Dapplooker. Uh, we are a graph indexer we have been running graph indexer on both ethereum arbitrum network uh, we are also a graph grantee uh, three times uh, uh, we are subgraph guardian so we have been uh, quite active on discord telegram helping subgraph developers uh, and users and also uh, we are building that looker which is a no code uh, web3 analytics platform so to summarize, uh, if you have a like, you can uh, uh, if you have a smart contract or subgraph or uh, 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 network data, uh, including graph network subgraphs, you can plug that into Dapplooker and build your uh, dashboards in very fast, uh, in no code way, uh, uh, in less than thirty minutes, and all this in a more uh, affordable. Uh, uh, way uh, very easily and it's no code so uh, you can you ju with just few clicks you'll be able to build your analysis that's great i want to go back a bay to what got you interested in learning tech in learning how to build and learning how to become a developer was there a, a time and place that you remember when you were younger that you said this is what i want to do and how that eventually led to Web3? Yeah, sure. So, uh, like, when I was in my, uh, like, schooling, I mean, 11, 12th grades. So, in India, like, I mean, you do, like, 10th, 11th, 12th, then you go to uh, B, Tech. So, uh, one of my favorite subject uh, uh, was, like, computer science. And uh, uh, so, like uh, uh like solving those uh, computer programs the simple i mean at the start like uh it was uh i mean it was a little harder for me but uh, uh those uh, uh uh those topics those subjects actually really excited me i was actually writing programs from my uh, uh 12 from schooling uh, schooling only and when I went to grade graduation, like I had the option to choose any stream I want. I wanted, I, I, didn't, I could have chosen science. Oh, I mean, I could have chosen computer science. I could have chosen arts. I could have chosen mechanical engineering. So I'm a uh, like uh, B.Tech uh, engineering person. And there I chose uh, computer science because, I mean, I was very clear. I was very sure that, I mean, this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to do, I mean, uh, coding is something which, uh, uh, excites when uh, it was like exciting me so i've been also like in my four year uh, graduation at the end of that uh, i was uh, uh, awarded gold medal for uh, uh, for i mean the computer science project which we built in final year no so, kidding uh, tell me yeah, about so, tell me about that gold medal project what did you build yeah so that uh, uh, so that project was uh, uh, i mean uh, I am 
I mean, right now I'm not remembering the exact one, but uh, it, it was, I mean, more like uh, data related. I mean, exact project I'm not remembering, but uh, uh, so in that, like, uh, we had to, I mean, basically we have to uh, create a uh, lot of tables, lot of schema uh, in uh, MySQL table. We created that. And in front of that, uh, uh, we've been like uh, uh, very, like very uh, UX, which was uh, like solving, uh, I mean, which was solving very a uh, particular problem at that point of time. I mean, right now we find a lot of tools there uh, for that. But yeah, it was more like a, a database management project. So complex schema, complex tables. And uh, database is something uh, which has been very, uh, like very close to me. The database stream in computer science is very close to me. I've been like designing uh, 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 schemas, tables, uh, uh, I mean, uh, reading, writing, scaling databases have been very like uh, close to me. So, uh, I mean, one, I mean, uh, some part of Dapluker or Graph Index uh, uh, is related with that because it is what I can say my interest and uh, 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 this is something like I want to do. I know about this. Hmm. And you're talking about Dapluker and talking about where you started really in that gold medal project. I love that anyone getting started in this space, there's always a story going back. Is there anything that you look back on as a kid or maybe in college that really you think is a core value of yourself that has allowed you to say Web3 is interesting to me? Because I've seen this kind of consistent narrative where Web3 has a consistent thought process of people who are just have something about man this is us coming together and doing something together in this tech space in a different way is there anything that you look back on and you think man that might have been something that brought me to web3 yeah so uh like uh, uh i would say that uh, uh so we i have been building uh i mean i've been building that for the last two years uh but i have been building on ethereum for past six years so uh, uh i mean six years before like i worked uh, uh I, I worked as one of the earliest employee at a, a product called uh, uh, ost uh, simple token where we were building like uh, layer two scaling solutions so like uh, my uh, group my uh, un understanding of web3 started from there and at the start i would be very honest like i mean it was not like uh, straightforward for me so uh, coming from a web web two back background to uh, uh, to web three and like writing smart so at that point of time we were writing smart contracts uh, I was one of the core uh, uh, like uh, uh, like foundation person where I was writing smart contract uh, where uh, I was uh, using web three js library which was very cutting edge and very new at that point of time uh, so uh, I started my journey from there. I mean, uh, when we, like, after I would say, uh, uh, after a year or after some time, uh, the I mean, the potential, uh, I mean, when I realized is, like, let's say I have a MetaMask, MetaMask wallet and, uh, uh, and so basically a wallet, that, I mean, after using those uh, MetaMask wallet, uh, having tokens, having uh, used it in a different way, I realized that, I am, I mean, a MetaMask wallet is basically your own bank account. So I have my bank account in my, I, I, I own, I mean, I'm owning it and I can uh, uh, spend it uh, in any way I want. I can spend it to an NFT project. I can spend it to a DeFi project. I can uh, uh, get uh, earnings from those, uh, uh, from spend, by spending different way. So they, they are like, I realized, uh, uh, I mean, the ownership, the decentralized part, uh, uh, and also like, uh, uh, as, as I mentioned, like I was, all, I'm, I'm also like more of a data person. So, so when, uh, graph protocol started, I think in 2019, uh, we were, I was one of the earliest, I mean, there was a, uh, hackathon organized by Yane. Uh, I also like emailed him, uh, uh, he, 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 that's, it was the first hackathon. Mm -hmm. uh, we built a subgraph for a project called Claros, mm. and uh, we we were one of the like uh, bounty winners. Mm. So uh, so there, like my journey of uh, uh, subgraph started, and subgraph is basically, uh, I mean, uh, it was very easy. I mean, that technology is, I mean, it's a it's a I mean, it's a very 
easy at that point of time. I mean, right now there are a lot of indexing solutions, but if you look back at 2019, uh, in that period, uh, that was a groundbreaking technology because you can basically extract any blockchain data and present in a very easily form uh, uh, access. I mean, through APIs, you can access it. So mm -hmm. they are my interest to uh, uh, subgraph, uh, graph protocol, uh, and in general, Web3, like, I, I mean, I was more accommodating, understanding it, enjoying it. I connect to that MetaMask moment very much where I remember, to relate to you, I remember doing a speedrun Ethereum get together, kind of trying to learn on my own. I had a friend with me and I was trying to build and I was just like, wait a minute, this is different. <coughs> where I have my own ability to essentially be my own bank, like you said. And then from there, that has been such a very cool journey into this space for myself. And you're bringing up uh, another part of this journey, the graph. And this is devs on the graph. You are a dev on the graph. You said you have experience with smart contracts. You have experience with now subgraphs. Can you tell me about that journey of getting to become familiar with the graph ecosystem as well as where is the graph in your stack for DappLooker? Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, graph and uh, I mean, graph protocol and subgraph uh, plays uh, uh, a major role in uh, in DappLooker and uh, how our I mean, DappLooker journey started. So uh, we have been like uh, uh, I have been personally been building uh, subgraphs uh, for a very long time, like since beginning. As I said, like we were one of the winners of uh, the first uh, 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 graph bounty and. Uh, we built for Claros, so there I mean started, and we and also like uh, I realized the potential of graphs, subgraphs, and eventually like we. So uh, I am more of a like user oriented, customer oriented person. So it's not that I build something and then I go to user and say like this is useful for you. What how I build is I first talk to uh, customers or users. So uh, this is I mean uh, 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 this is what uh, we are thinking to build. What do you think? And he's and in user, I mean, they suggest like different, I mean, different suggestions, feedbacks, and based on that, uh, uh, like I enhance uh, the solution or product. So uh, um, to start with, we so we are building subgraph, and also like we are offering individual explorers using those subgraphs to mm. uh, to uh, to DApps. So uh, at that time, like there were very few subgraph developers. There were very like uh, 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 very few, few people building on uh, graph protocol. So uh, we're working with various, you can say, clients or uh, uh, customers. So we're building subgraph for them, and also like build not only subgraph, we're building like dashboards, individual like, dashboards explorer for them. And th that's where uh, we are realize the potential that uh, uh, subgraphs are open APIs, yes. But what for for an, for a user for a, like non tech users, what matters for him is the visualization. So if in, if in, I mean right now if you if you uh, if 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 for a let's say CXO or a like marketing person, you show him subgraph, he'll not understand it. But if you show that there is subgraph and this is a visual form of subgraph, I mean he'll have like I mean wow factor that he is able to through subgraph uh, monitor and visualize all his data in, in a visual form. And uh, uh, there, like he can do, I mean, with DappLooker, a lot of uh, analysis. So with DappLooker, uh, uh, so this is like, I mean, how uh, uh, our uh, like uh, like DappLooker journey started. We started building a lot of subgraphs and also like dashboards with it. We realize the potential in in terms of technology. Uh, so uh, like we, I mean, we have. I mean, right now, I mean, we support different data sources. One is like smart contract, one is uh, subgraphs. And now like recently, we started also supported graph network subgraphs, studio subgraphs, and uh, uh, also like off-chain data, uh, off-chain APIs, uh, JSON API, CSV, you can connect. So we, uh, if, if I mean, if a DAP has subgraph, either studio or uh, uh, individual i mean or he has built his subgraph or a developer has uh subgraph he can basically plug that into dap looker and what we do is we run uh we have our transfer i mean we call it processing engine transformation engine which basically trans transforms that data 
uh, subgraph data into a very like presentable form. And uh, so, uh, uh, so let's say if there are three entities in a subgraph, so all I mean those three entities will be three tables uh, in DAPLOOKER. Uh, for, I mean, let's take an example of Avi. So Avi Ethereum, for example, it's a lending pro protocol. So it has borrowed, deposit, and transactions. These are three entities in subgraph. So in that program, you'll see three different tables. And so we tr the transformation engine processes that data, uh, analyzes that data. Uh, it transforms that into three different uh, tables, borrow, uh, or deposit, and uh, uh, transactions. And once uh, uh, that is transformed, a uh, user will see all the subgraph data uh, there in a very like uh, tabular format or they'll see that all the subgraph data got there. Now what users can do is uh, uh, they can they can run analysis on and that uh, uh, what they can do is they can so we have around like uh, uh, 15 plus different kinds of visualization support so they can uh, 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 select those visualizations and build different kinds of Let's say, I mean, for our way, let's say you want monthly uh, deposit volume or monthly borrow, borrow volume. So with three, three four clicks uh, 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 on the data, you can build a pie chart or you can build a bar chart or you can uh, build a line chart. And uh, so you can build as many charts as you want. And you can also like, we have a, a dashboard builder. Uh, so using a drag and drop dashboard builder, you can add as many charts as you want uh, uh, on that. You can build a dashboard. You can share it publicly, and how like uh, uh, how like uh, uh, DApps use it? They use uh, they use the public link to share to their social, to share to the team, to share to the community. Now, community comes to DappLooker, and uh, uh, they fork it. Since the data is, I mean, open uh, at DappLooker, they can come. They can build more such analysis. So eventually, like it brings. Uh, uh, transparency to their community. Uh, uh, people know like which pool is working, which pool is not working. I mean, what is the current deposit rate? What is the current borrow rate? And uh, uh, yeah, so all this in a very like I would say no code way, uh, in a very uh, affordable way. And uh, uh, they can also like uh, so Web three is more community oriented. It, it's very different from and, how you on, I, onboard people. I want to. I want to double click on that what you were saying about community specific to the transparency and the availability of the analytics it sounds like from the very get-go you've been interested in data and data science and the data analytics side of things now that you're providing that in an open and transparent way i know that you also we talked a little bit before this interview and you have a few subgraphs on the decentralized network as well so Tell me how the transparent goal of you and having this data be able to tell stories to people kind of intersects with the actual data piping through decentralized indexers. Is there a thread that connects the two kind of value sets that you say, hey, there's a reason that I Abay, chose to go on the decentralized network and also in a transparent, open anal analytics format? Why, why Is there a thread that that pulls for you? Yeah, so uh, I mean that's the reason we we are also like we became indexer. So subgraphs are like I mean graph techno graph protocol is a very like uh, uh, the very decentralized protocol. So people trust it. I mean community users tap trust it, and uh, uh, so I mean uh, you have the you have very good documentation. So as a, as a, as a web three user, you can go to documentation. Let's say you have deployed a smart contract, you can follow some steps, uh, graph CLI steps, and you can deploy your subgraph to decentralized network. Now, uh, and the I mean, uh, like, uh, uh, and those uh, subgraphs, uh, there are around 400 plus indexers. So, uh, I mean, it's an open marketplace. So anyone, any indexer can come and uh, index that data. And what does that mean is like, uh, you not see any downtime. Uh, because there's always mm -hmm. like one pl one plus indexer uh, indexing that those subgraphs. So uh, and also the latency. I mean the kind of infra indexer has or the kind of token economics has. If you are uh, if you are indexing efficiently, you get more. Uh, I mean more rewards. So uh, the latency is also good. Uh, 
the uh, the down i mean there's no I mean, down time also it's a very like trusted protocol and that's why uh, i mean uh, i mean it has support of 39 plus networks and more so like uh, most of web3 uh, uses subgraph and that's where like we identified the potential that if you provide a subgraph driven analytics uh, uh, it, it's a very like it's a very in a very transparent way you'll see like uh, i mean there's a huge scope in that area i love that where i see the thread being pulled for myself and what you are providing is that to have data be decentralized in terms of the ability to write on the on the blockchain that's been done we have that with all the different chains you can write to them but be able to read it not just to see large tables not to be able to see just confusing huge amounts of data but to actually tell a story i feel that that is as important as the ability to store the decentralized data you have to be able to read it well and so i really appreciate the intersection that you are creating between the graph and having that data be provided on a decentralized infrastructure that is the decentralized network on the graph and then you're providing an ability to analyze that and i think that's a really really cool type of uh, direction that you've taken daplooker very very cool so abey i want to switch up where so far I feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit and hopefully the listeners have too. I want to be able to see if you have time to go through a little workshop where you can show the listener. And if you're listening on the podcast version, we will have a link in the description to go to the video version right now. And if you're on the video version, just keep on watching where Abe is going to take over the screen and go ahead and start sharing what he's been building. Is that, are you ready for that, Abay? Yes, I'm ready. Awesome. Uh, let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? It is visible. I can see DAP Looker, seamless no code, multi-chain web three analytics. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So this is what we do uh, in a very simplified manner. So we provide like, subgraph smart contract analytics uh, on chain off chain analysis and whatever analysis you build you can access the data uh, through apis or also like you can embed uh, uh, those charts dashboard on your app so basically like let's say i mean how 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 dapps use it they link their dashboards uh, uh, at or their website so their user is able to view those analysis i mean we have been like uh, we have been working with multiple like 15 plus networks i mean we have on onboarded around 250 plus dapps uh, that that includes like uh, some uh, top web projects including silo uh, lens protocol Aave, uh beam swap so these are from different uh, networks also with support like ethereum polygon moonbeam uh, we also like have a lot of analysis on graph network so uh, to, to simplify, like why Dapplooker? So it's no code. Uh, you don't have to be data analyst or tech person to build those analysis. Uh, you can like in a no code way. We have query builder, we have dashboard builder, which you can use to build those uh, subgraph uh, and smart contract analytics. So if you have a if you have subgraph deployed on uh, uh, hosted service or I mean, currently we are migrating to graph network. So if you have a, a graph network subgraph, which you can plug to Dapplooker and uh, uh, build like a uh, no code dashboard with just few clicks on chain. So a lot of data, like uh, <clears throat> we uh, like after talking, as I said, uh, after talking with users, we realize that it's I mean, there are a lot of data uh, present off chain, either in IPFS or uh, APIs or CSV. So uh, you can do on chain, off chain together. So in a single dashboard, you can have data of subgraph as well as your I mean, if you have data off chain and so embedding chart APIs, so you can uh, uh, embed those chat, those analysis you build, or you can access those two APIs. So I'll directly take you to the, uh, so whenever you log in or sign up, you'll take, you'll go to this my dashboard page <coughs> where uh, you'll see this, uh, I mean, register project. So this is a very like, uh, I mean, we have a, a lot of like uh, feature projects where basically, I mean, the, you can view the existing analysis or you will be view all the data and uh, you can uh, uh, build like custom analysis on that 
or if you have your own project let's say so you have different data sources subgraph smart contract so let's take subgraph you click on register and here you can like write uh, let's say rvv3 uh, ethereum you can select the network <clears throat> there, i mean you'll see all those networks here and uh, here i mean you can provide the Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sorry here you can provide uh, the subgraph endpoint so let's say I mean, this is for our uh, protocol and if you have a, a, a graph network subgraph just select this and it'll ask for subgraph uh, id so let's say this one or and you can provide your api key I and mean, this is an optional so once you do that uh, you i mean your project will be registered and in some like uh, uh, you'll get a notification Uh, you can enable notification either through email or push notification so you'll get those notification that your uh, data is registered i mean the data is available and you can start running analysis on so let's take an example of rvv3 ethereum so uh, let's go to this view data so you will see all the raw data here so this is rvv3 ethereum uh, uh, like so data powered by subgraph so you'll see pools you'll see uh protocol level data uh user transactions so let's on the borrow data so let's go to borrow data so you'll see all uh you'll see the uh, borrow transaction data here there is transaction hash there is uh which pool it belongs to what user borrowed uh the reserve information what amount he borrowed what the at that point of time what the borrow rate and uh, and the time stamp so this we we have a transformation engine which basically transforms uh, into like this presentable format now let's say we want to build a, a monthly volume of uh, i mean rvv3 borrow monthly volume so I click on this you'll see different options so click on summarize so so when you click on timestamp you'll see a lot of like granular uh, information minute hour day so we said month so let's click on month and here you can different options like you can uh, uh, you can sum the amount or i mean different operations are there you click on count of rows you can add a filter that let's say count should be uh, greater than 0 and you can also like sort the data you can create new column dynamic columns you click on visualize now you, when you do that you'll see like in jan it was 355 transactions in may this one now the best part starts now so you go to visualization you see like different uh, visualization options like chart bar chart combo area row you click on bar your bar chart will be ready uh, uh, you can select different visualization i mean line chart but yeah let's go with bar for now you can also like uh, create trends I mean, weekly trends monthly trends and uh, there are different settings so uh, you can choose color uh, as per your liking and you can also like there are show value on data points so i mean so you can see like in march there was a the max tran transaction on rvv3 ethereum and you save it so you you and it is a concept of collection so either you can make it private or you can uh, make it public so we made it uh, public so i can save here yeah so once you save a chart it already you want to add to a dashboard so uh, you can select a dashboard or create a new dashboard so let's say I'll search for a dashboard uh, maybe yeah maybe let's say this one so this is now you see a drag and drop uh, builder uh, where the chart is added at the end and you've been building up this dashboard for a minute it looks like and you're able to just drop in that chart yeah that's great so, uh, so this is a very like uh, i mean cool dashboard where 
uh, you can so basically you are comparing Aave Avalanche, Polygon, Optimism, uh, three different dApps on a single dashboard. So you can like you can compare uh, the TVL, the users, all this. And here, like I just dropped the chart I, I created and I mm. like added that. And you can basically save it, uh, and uh, and it it will be like uh, and and you'll see this on the. Uh, uh, publicly so we have a concept of right now saving it so we have a concept of like uh, like discover so basically you can uh discover new dashboards uh new analysis so for example this rvv3 uh ethereum dashboards created by uh, data analysts initially so you'll see like total transactions uh and different percentage of different actions and what you can do is you can like click on share you'll get a public link you'll also get a, a embedding link which you can embed on your website and you can view the raw transaction or you can fork the dashboard as a user and build a new one and uh, yeah so this is uh, so this is how in no code way you can easily build uh, uh, dapper and analysis powered by uh, subgraphs so for example this dashboard uses a we have a launch polygon optimism subgraph and i mean this analysis is built on those subgraphs and here we have also like worked a lot on uh, graph network analysis so if you click this tag you will see uh, all the graph network analysis for example this dashboard is trending it's quite popular the billing dashboard uh, so you will see a ton of like uh, different graph network dashboards there is billing there is delegated analysis there is bond dashboard there is data depot dashboards uh, subgraph dashboards so you'll find like all kind of graph network analysis here and uh, for example the billing one you can see growth here like how the graph network query fees is being like is is growing that's amazing tell me and the audience what of this entire process of building this by the way this is very very amazing I, I, it's it's really cool what you're doing now. um uh the the ability just to tell the story of the data rapidly i love that the process of this was over years like you were saying what is one part of this process that you really look back at and say this was a really important moment for Dapplicker to get to this point. Was there a moment in time that you look back at and you're like, "Man, that that was tough, but I'm happy that we're here and I'm thankful that we're here." Yeah, I mean, uh if you're asking in terms of technology, I would say like uh, uh I mean, I would say that uh, a graph protocol, I mean, being associated with graph protocol at the early time like kind of help help me because it was one of the way to extract uh, uh data uh, uh so what we are building is building uh, a lot on top of graph protocol and what uh, uh, so uh, at that time like there was uh, it was a cutting edge tech tech there were a lot of bugs there were a lot of issues uh, we are also like i mean uh, since there were a lot of development going on we also reported issues on github which was taking a lot of time to uh, uh, to getting resolved uh, so two things i would say that uh, being associated with graph protocol early on uh, like helped because uh, using that technology we were building on top of uh, different analysis which like uh, which user wanted so uh, a, a project i mean a project like claros or ave i mean they want to see what is my tvl I mean, how many users i have what is the monthly growth i have that is one thing and second thing i would say that uh, uh, I mean, we we I mean, we are always on our uh, technical discussions, technology discussions, roadmap. We have a lot of discussion on user experience. So, I mean, if you see the current uh, tools available, uh, you need to I mean, have you need to you need to they are very tech tech oriented. You need to be technical. You need to be data analyst. You need to hire let's say uh, a data guy to build your analysis. And we want to bridge that gap. So us. Uh, the data and analysis is required by cmo or let's say a biz dev person but he has to rely on data analysts for that what we are saying is you come will like we will uh, integrate your data you just come click, click do some I mean, uh, uh, do few clicks and uh, uh, you'll be able to visualize what you want so uh, uh, kind of 
it's a no code which uh, saves time uh, for a for a dev for a developer which eventually saves money for uh, uh, for a dev or for a dev that's amazing Abey, I want to thank you for your time today. I want to thank you for sharing what you've been working on, building for years now. And I'll ask one final question for you. For you, if you could share with any beginner developers out there who are stepping into the Web3 space, as well as any beginning developers learning about the graph and subgraphs, are there any bits of advice that you would give them who are just getting started in Web3 development and building in Web3? Yeah, so, uh, and I would say that, uh, uh, I mean, it's a very cutting edge tech. So uh, uh, Web3, it's still very early. They, I mean, there's a lot of gap in, in different tools available. But uh, if you have to act, if you have to, uh, get on-chain data uh, for integration to your DAP, for analysis, start with uh, subgraph, start building subgraph. And now, I mean, uh, so start with that. Uh, and now like, uh, I mean, now, I mean, there's very good documentations. Uh, uh, they are very good. I mean, there's a Discord, very active Discord group where you can ask questions, which will resolve even we like as part of subgraph guardian, uh, we are helping onboarding those users and uh, uh, as part of the i mean as doing uh, doing that as a, you can be a, become a delegator where you can help secure the network and also like get uh, rewards uh, so that way you can get started and uh, uh, some of the, i mean some of the exciting technologies also like i want to talk about is uh, i mean substream firehouse which we have been uh, like uh, 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 working very actively on so basically like today i mean just today my team informed that they deployed uh, uh their first two substance pa powered subgraphs and deployed there so that is also i mean it's it's in rust uh it's a uh i mean you learn a lot so uh, uh the the capability which i mean there are some uh, uh things lacking in subgraph for example if you want to access the complete network data with substream firehouse uh solves that in a much faster way so there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of scope in learning and also like make a good uh, tool make a good uh, product so uh, extracting uh, start with graph protocol there lot the, the community is very supportive you will find a lot of people if you ask right questions they'll help you uh, in graph protocol so uh, but yeah i mean start keep building keep building uh, because it's still very early and there's a huge scope there's a huge uh, scope in this domain. Love that answer. Abey, enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. Thank you so much for being here with Devs on the Graph. And listeners, thank you for sticking around. And Abey, if they want to get any information on Daplooker or to contact you, is there any type of uh, links or any type of uh, information that you'd like to share right now before we sign off? Sure. So, uh, uh, or, I mean, if you go to the website, you'll find our Discord, you'll find our Telegram. And uh, my, I mean, I'm very active on Discord, Telegram, both. So you can direct message me. Uh, uh, my, I mean, you can, on Telegram, Discord, or even you can, you can email me. So, uh, yeah. So on website, you'll find like all the information to get connected. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Abey. Go ahead and stay on. I'm going to stop the recording now. Listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good rest of your day.